It all started with a press conference, a two-hour one, hosted by Spanish football club FC Barcelona. The president of the club, Juan Laporta, was out to address long-held allegations of corruption and match-fixing. But he didn't just defend himself and his predecessors over claims of multi-million dollar payouts to referees. Laporta diverted attention away from Barca, taking aim at the other top team in the league, its main rival, Real Madrid. Un club que tots sabeu que ha estat afavorit per decisions arbitrals històricament i en l'actualitat. It was an exercise in deflection, and it reignited a historic rivalry. Which team is seen as the team of the regime? Regime can be understood in different ways. Regime is in the Spanish state, but in, in particular, and very specifically, the idea within a Barcelona fan base that Real Madrid is the regime team relating to the Franco regime. All of a sudden it creates a million historians that weren't there before. A million people deciding, right, we know what history is and choosing, cherry picking the moments of history that suit the already preconceived uh, narrative or agenda that they're pushing. When you look at the rivalry between Madrid and Barcelona in particular as the embodiment of Spanish football, the two biggest clubs, it's impossible to understand it without a political context. The pushback from Real Madrid against FC Barcelona was immediate. Just hours after Laporta's remarks, the club's in-house TV channel broadcast a four-minute video with the title, which is the team of the regime. Real was delving deep into political history and Barcelona's relationship with Spain's former dictator, Francisco Franco, whose repressive regime had lasted almost four decades. The way um, the, the facts were, were produced, um, it, was, it was perfectly done to sort of somehow produce this idea that Football Club Barcelona was, uh, was a club very close to Francoism. There were pictures uh, of the Camp Nou being inaugurated, uh, done so by the, by the Franco ministry at the time, with uh, religious presence of bishops and uh, religious chanting, and the Spain flag being visibly put in the, uh, in the proceedings. And that Barcelona just condecorated Franco a few times with the highest possible condecoration from the club. And I tell you, they better did, because if they didn't, uh, it, they would be seen as, uh, as rebels. But it was a stadium where freedom was clearly displayed as well. Of course, that's not in the video. The flag of Catalonia was seen at the Camp Nou at a time where it was illegal. Songs were chanted at the Camp Nou that allowed people that thought differently to, uh, to the dictatorship to express themselves. It was one of those uh, few forums where people could do it without the fear of, uh, of being arrested. The link in between Football Club Barcelona and the Franco dictatorship was, was exaggerated, to say the least. In historical terms, it's very difficult to decide who is the most Francoist team. It is obvious that the Franco dictatorship used Real Madrid for propaganda purposes for what we would call today soft power. This is a, a pariah dictatorship in Europe and they needed very badly to have international success. And Real Madrid was the platform that provided some sort of international recognition. But then, of course, when, when Barcelona were doing well, um, they would actually say, well, you know, Barcelona is the representation of, uh, of Spain. Who and what represents Spain is complicated, even today. Its diversity defies easy catch-all definitions. There's the capital, Madrid, with all the symbolic connotations of power and wealth that comes with being located in the very center of the country. But then there are numerous autonomous regions, like Catalonia and the Basque Country, with their distinctive languages, cultures and political ideals. And Spain's football teams are real-life representations of those regional identities. They've been used throughout history as soft power players in a never-ending political game. These narratives are ingrained in the club's ideologies. And in the case of Real Madrid, which plays here in the historic Bernabeu Stadium, it all started more than a century ago 
when the king gave the team its name. Real Madrid has got uh, as a uh, name, Real, which means royal, but didn't just before the war. Uh, when the Republic was in charge, there was no monarchy and the royal was taken out. So football in general has been used by the politicians to, uh, to make a point. The fan base and, um, and the dictatorship um, and, the, and the direct sports actually changed over the years. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was, it was somehow a club related to the Spanish monarchy, and it had a fairly conservative base. That became even more the case in the 1920s with the dictatorship of Primo de Rivera. During the Civil War, we actually have a communist uh, president of Real Madrid. And the Franco, um, that changed it again, and we have presidents that are very close to the, to the Franco dictatorship. When you're talking about the back end of the Franco regime, the beginnings of an opening up, the beginnings of, if you like, an opposition emerging. Barcelona see themselves as a point of resistance. Their slogan is more than a club, and the idea of more than a club, the phraseology of more than a club, starts uh, gaining currency in the late 60s, early 70s, very much as this idea that Barcelona are a club that represent Catalan society. Catalan political um, aspirations, maybe even a degree of Catalan nationalism, but again, like most identities, there's a degree there in which it's challenged and some groups see it differently than others. And so you get this idea that essentially more than the club really just means that we mean something beyond what happens on the football pitch. That's exactly what happened with this most recent feud. It moved from the pitch to the political arena. The Catalonian government spokesperson condemned the accusations made by Real Madrid against FC Barcelona. In a first moment, it seems that it cannot be that, as I said, a fake news from a manual like this can be reproduced in a official profile. Madrid's community president jumped to Real's defence and then went on the attack. It seems not only a video, but I think that the team of communication and documentation of Real Madrid should be working on both. A back and forth, a reminder for fans following the play-by-play from their phones that football in Spain is not just a game. Society right now is very divided and, and very tribal. So whatever is sensed by the politicians that can bring the votes and can bring the attention, they will use. And quite clearly, the Barcelona-Real Madrid division is something that has been used by both representatives of the Madrid government, local government, and also the, uh, the Catalan government to benefit their own, their own ideas. Football is powerful because football carries with it the, the aspirations and the identities of, of thousands and thousands of people. And so it's, it's a fantastic tool for reaching people. You talk, for example, to people who've been directors at either Real Madrid or Barcelona, and they will talk to you about how the degree of pressure they're under, the degree of exposure they face, the degree of access they get is greater even than some of the politicians they talk to. This is a huge tool for mobilisation of votes, of opinions, of attitudes and of people fundamentally. And so politicians know that attitudes towards football and the way they engage with football fans takes with it the potential to either gain or perhaps more importantly lose huge amounts of votes. That's why the politics around football will always have its limits. Because when the final whistle blows, you want to be on the winning team.